the English Riviera, Torquay. For over a hundred years, one of Britain's favorite seaside holiday destinations, home to some of the country's finest hotels. And this one. Silence, Christian, Christian. Is he silence? Yeah. Welcome to the Grosvenor. Mount your dolphin, get set. At the helm, manager Mark. I don't pay the AA anymore. I've awarded it three stars. Long-suffering deputy Christian. The Grosvenor is different to other hotels. And I'm not blowing my trumpet here, but I think it's because I'm there. And unflappable reservations manager Alison. Stop it! I've done it already! Just put them in! Have you had the good news? You're leaving, possibly, is that it? Together, they have one summer to save this loss-making hotel. We have to win. Failure yeah. is not an option. Not, not an option. By satisfying the demands of the great British public... <laughs> ..who flock here for summer holiday fun... <laughs> ..bringing all their baggage with them. It's everything, not just a room. It's the hotel itself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I go on holiday, would I stay in this hotel? <laughs> My answer to that is... Um, the directors and owners of Primark probably don't wear Primark clothes. <laughs> it's the biggest event on the hotel calendar. We're all doomed, but Merry Christmas anyway. As manager Mark tackles his first Christmas at the Grosvenor. We don't need to put on a pantomime, we're bloody having one. Do it tight, cos I don't want my cushion falling down. Since the summer, deputy manager Christian has left the hotel. I'd love stuff like Twister. Leaving Mark more reliant than ever on Alison. <laughs> You'd be good when your guests getting on. I don't think the guests want to play Twister. But it's not just one hotel they're looking after. Mark also owns the two neighbouring hotels. Quick, hurry up! And for the biggest meal of the year, he's spreading himself across all three. Unbelievable, they've locked me out. This is so crazy, this. Merry Christmas to everyone! God, I have to say that one more time, shoot me. Now, we're going to write some cards. What do you think? Look, think they're all right? What do they say inside? Inside they say, say. have a lovely... Just say, what do you think it says? Well, I don't Happy know. I what just, do you think it I says? just asked a question. Good morning, the group from the town. Merry Christmas. We need to make a list of what decorations we want because I want icicles hanging down the front of the hotel and a Christmas tree on the roof and light bulbs and everything. I mean, ideally, we want them to go, ah, oh, this is like Santa's Grotto. But we can't afford it, so they'll have what they get. Christmas is the best and worst time of the year in the hotel business. It's great, you've got all the guests coming for Christmas, it's the most important time of the year. And then you've got all the staff having to work through Christmas, you know? Well, not, so, not all the staff. Well... Some of the staff. Well, you don't, but the No, rest but of I them used don't. to, so let's not, you know, try and pretend that I used to do it, you know, not do it. Are we going to have a real tree or an artificial tree? Whatever's the cheapest. Real, definitely. If you go up to the moors, they grow wild. You could just take a saw and just bring one home. It's one of the busiest times as well, you know, all the hotels are full. We do a big programme for Christmas, you know, it's full board with, like, lunches and dinners. Can't you go to the pound shop and get this stuff? As long as it looks Christmassy. Christmas is a little bit like a wedding. There is no second chance, you know? If something terrible goes wrong at Christmas, you've ruined somebody's Christmas. Why have we got so many balls? So, from my point of view, it's extra stress. Mm, really? You knew know all about that, wouldn't you? It is. What do we do with these? Do you want me to really answer that? You are the reason that everybody is stressed in the hotel over Christmas and 52 weeks of the year anyway. It's because of oh, you. It, isn't. it is. I I'm slightly disappointed. <laughs> When I said, let's have some icicles hanging down the front of the building and a nice big tree and all lit up, you know, to welcome the guests, this isn't what I expected. We've got a tree that isn't big enough. 
The icicles aren't quite what I thought either. What? This, this is the icicles after the end of the thaw, I think, you know? It's, um... When you put the lights on, dress it from the front. Don't bother about going all around the tree, just sort of loop them around the front. It's to give a nice welcome to the guests, you know? So, you know, arriving for Christmas and, you know, the hotel's sort of lit up. Get them in the Christmas spirit. Um... <sighs> Hope they've got a good imagination. With the hotel booked to capacity and just one day before the guests arrive... Quarter seven, we do a welcome reception from your hosts. Alison briefs the staff on the packed Christmas programme. All the dinners are at seven o'clock. Uh, bingo, 8.30. So Christmas Eve is quite self-explanatory. What are you here? Are you? Yes. Well, not being funny. We thought we'd do it without you because yeah, you've obviously funny. got other things to do. Why are you standing behind me? I hate that. It freaks me out. So the trophy competitions, here we're doing darts. Few arrows. I will be running that because I love a bit of darts. Bye -bye. And we're going to be doing drafts. <sighs> and then this champagne reception. So you need to get all your champagne flutes and also make sure that the bubbly's in the fridge. <laughs> Anything else then, Sir Jenkins? Or are we all like up and ready to go? Just you know that. It's easy, it's never a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I need a beverage after that. I didn't even finish my first one. Is the Christmas tree falling apart? What do we do, go and stick it back up? Arrivals day. How long before everybody arrives? With 300 guests descending on all three hotels at the same time... We better hurry up, then. Mark is more reliant on reservations manager Alison than ever. <sighs> but she's phoned in sick. Morning. All right. Yes. So, what's happening with Alison? I think she had a dodgy prawn sandwich off Jane yesterday because her sick was absolutely stinking of rotten fish. Great joy. Um, she so, she, so she's not in today? No. I mean, not being funny. Oh, no, today, I said, I right, the, I number often... one, the number one arrival day of the whole year, oh, no. I, I would be <laughs> here in a hospital trolley <laughs> with a bloody drip on my arm, because I would be, you know? I don't know, it's a nightmare. <laughs> With Alison off sick, Mark is left to manage the arrivals himself. Where is everybody? Not a role he's accustomed to. Unbelievable. Action stations, come on. I'm not having people complain on Christmas arrivals, you know, no way. Well, where's maintenance? Get maintenance to do the cases. Not this much. John and Sally Marley. Hello. Mr. Mrs. Bishop. Your room number is room number one. And it's the first room on the right hand side. Hello. So there's cream tea being served in the lounge in about 10 or 15 minutes' time. Thank you. So, where did you say Stephen is? They're both down in the kitchen cleaning all the cups and saucers, and they're all dirty, so we sorted them all out. <sighs> Why are all the cups dirty? Because they left them in there bleaching today. So we picked today to leave them in bleach. Unbelievable. Right, first thing, sir, let's get the kettle going. This is filthy. I'm not getting a chance. It's not even 2 o'clock yet, and I've checked I know, I, I know. Well, it's not my fault they've arrived early. But... From the moment the guests check into their rooms, the complaints begin. I was told we can have a family room with a balcony. There's only one room with a balcony, it's not a family room. That's what we was told. I'll we'll send somebody up. Are you in your room just now? Yes. Hello, so Trevor, I'm, I'm Mark. I understand you're not 100 percent with the room. Not really. I mean we wanted two singles, you see, for right. my son and and um, he's not very happy neither, are you? Then? Just, no, we just did something in a hole, in a little hole. Sorry about that, but it's, it's his feeling. You know, I mean, the way, the way things are going now, I feel like having money refunded and go somewhere else, ain't it? Because I'm not, I'm not happy with this well, one bit. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate it's not the best view, but this time of the year, there's not a lot to look at, even no. when you face the sea. No. Do you know what I mean? It's, no. um, you know. Marie and her son Lee have travelled down from the home they share in the West Midlands. It's Lee's birthday treat for me. Mm. 
You know, I've never been away. I always say to you, didn't know, I'd love to go away for Christmas. It'd just be a change, wouldn't it? It'd be a change, yes. It's just to experience it and see what it's like. I'm looking forward to it, actually. Mm. I, I really oh, yeah, am, yeah. yes. Mm. I'm quite disappointed, aren't you? Really, I'm really disappointed, really. Right. I mean, obviously, you know, the whole sort of break is all about the food, the entertainment, yes. the whole, you know, it's a full yes. package with buffets and, and everything. And the, and the room is only sort Do of. Do they part have meals as well in the package? Yeah, did you not know? Have no, you seen I, the programme? I, no, I haven't been I've, told right, anything. I'd like to have a look, look at this. The, the evening entertainment we do. Yes. To, um, you know, this is the itinerary for tomorrow. Yes. There's all different competitions going on. Um, even Christmas carols, luncheon. As the first arrivals settle in for Christmas at the Grosvenor, the next coachload is on its way. Among the passengers travelling down from Barnsley are recently widowed Ruth White and Bill Buckley. And tree tops glisten and children listen to hear you're very lucky, actually, that you don't get carol singers. I had one young chap, he stood there and he went, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. I says, hold on, that's not a carol. That is a Christmas song. So he said, what's a carol? And I'm not kidding you, this is true. I said, well, good King Wentless last. Shepherds watch their flocks. Day or day. Mary and bright. I just stop. I'll get me purse. I'm paying you to go away. And May that's it. And that was the only carol singer I had. Yeah. Christmas has Both Ruth and Bill are spending Christmas away from home for the same reason. Once you've lost your husband, a partner, Christmas is not the same anymore. I would think 99% of all these guests this week are here to meet people, have a laugh, have a bit of company. I cannot imagine a more lonely time than being on your own at Christmas. All Christmas Eve day, I'd be on my own, probably invited out for my Christmas dinner, Christmas day again, the morning they'd be on my own, you're home early evening, then you're on your own, rest of the night. Thank you, okay. thank you very much. So I go away for company. I'm not on my own, I'm not lonely. Hello, my Hello. lovely. Ruth White. Number 17. Thank you. If you go through the arts, first or second staircase, but this young lad will take you. Oh, good. OK, and your name is? Brian. Come on, Ryan. Thank you. All right, my lovely. Oh. It's nice. It's adequate. I mean, the time I spend in bedrooms, it's, it's, it doesn't really matter, you know. I came last year and I had a marvellous time. I had company of four ladies all Christmas last year, so I thought, well, it may happen again. I'm not usually get. A, I don't usually get a double room. It's a same room for company. Mince pies, five course dinner, then Christmas Day. Oh yeah. It's seven course Christmas lunch. Gosh. So it isn't just about the room. No, no I understand right? that. No. By the time you go home, your clothes won't fit you. <laughs> <laughs> I promise that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a bit happier? Yes, yes. Wonderful. Yes. Okay, I'll thank see you at Hubbard's three. But thank anything else we can help with, don't hesitate okay. to ask. All right, thank, thank you. Very you. Much. Bye. Now he's explained everything, and I understand. The room will be nothing compared to what's going to be in here, yeah. is it really? Yeah. We don't sell a room, we sell a holiday. A bedroom is to go to sleep. While you're asleep, it's dark, you can't see it anyway. It's not that important. Manager Mark lives alone in room 46, on the first floor of his own hotel. Last Christmas was so much different for me. 
I was living in a big beautiful home, I just got married and, and money and finances were fine. During the last year, the financial pressure of buying the Groves now has lost me my beautiful home um, and my marriage. And I'm struggling to pay my bills. Different Christmas altogether for me this year. But it means I can focus on the guests, make sure they have a good Christmas. A very warm welcome to the Grosvenor Hotel. Hooray! Marvellous. Sir, so, put your hands up if you've never been here before. <laughs> Blimey, you're brave, aren't you? <laughs> One, two. Hang on. It's working again now. I just want to say, um, it's your Christmas, but it's my Christmas as well, okay? While you're here over Christmas, as far as I'm concerned, we're just one big family having a wonderful Christmas together. Thank you very much. <laughs> Is there Wi-Fi in the rooms? The no. Yes and no. Looking forward to spending Christmas at the Grosvenor, John and Sally Marley. Together, they are used to the finer things in life. I used to work for the Queen's cousin, and Sally used to be there as well. The, the right hon. Mrs. Wills and her husband, Major Wills. She was housekeeper, cook, and I was butler, chauffeur, odd job, handyman, whatever you like to say. In that time, the Queen did come for her birthday meal, of which I cooked it, and John was the butler, so he served it. Well, you had to produce a menu, and it had to be OK. You know, and um, everybody watches what the Queen does. And uh, she shuffled the chair as though she was going to get up. And then, of course, everybody has to get up, you see. It was a lovely experience because it was nice to have met virtually all the royals in person, even the young ones, you know, Harry and all those guys. You know, it was really nice. Following the deaths of their employers, the Marley's circumstances have changed considerably. The job at the moment is um, I drive a taxi. Uh, Sally, you work with Mark and Spencer's, don't you? I no. do, yes. I work at Simply Food now. And it's lovely. I work with some lovely people. We know the good times as well as the bad times. And this here is a lovely place to come for Christmas. But obviously, we have had better in the past. No two ways about that. If you swap the toast over, then it's a bit... It's not quite <laughs> toast, is it? It's bread toast. But just some of the old things, the way the tables are set and things like that. We are, we are a little bit critical, oh, aren't we? Yes. When you sit down at the table and you see the forks the wrong place and one thing like that. Like that. I can't really use rather large. <laughs> the table's well, rather small. <laughs> I think we'd set the table up 12 foot long for two or three people for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, it would be 100 times better, can't it? Yeah, but I mean, it is a hotel after all. You can't think like that really, but it's hard not to, isn't it, when you've, you know, yeah, you've but done it's, it all? Yeah, it's still lovely. Yeah. It's very sweet and it's different. For the second day running, Mark's reservations manager has left him in the lurch. Um, Alison's not in today. Sorry? Again. She's not in. So she's... she's still ill? Mm, allegedly. Oh, uh, my God. It's, it's a bloody nightmare. Then it's worth. No, it isn't. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, not you again. Morning. What, Where's what? Alison? She's not here. She's not here till tomorrow. Mark's mum, Stella, who lives down the road, pops by to drop off her presents. Look what I found. Oh, is that for Alison? Yeah. Excellent. It's got face on one side, arse on the other. Oh, yeah, she'll appreciate that. I go up there three times a week. I go up there and annoy him. I don't annoy him, I go up there and speak to him. 
I keep going and telling him he's got to look after himself, but you might as well talk to that, because he takes no notice. There's your tin of milk to go with your ginger cake. It's like bloody food parcels, isn't it, yeah. you know? <laughs> but this is a bad Christmas for him, because he's on his own. Hates being on his own. Always has been. If he came home from school, and we used to go out, when, he, when we came back, he was always standing at the window waiting for somebody to come back. We're actually booked in for Christmas Day lunch. All oh, right, yes. But I'm vegetarian, so there was nothing on there for vegetarian, so I thought I'd right. call in and... Uh... OK, that's useful. Yes. <laughs> OK. Yes, yes, yes. Right, my daughter's a vegetarian. OK. So when I used to do Christmas dinner, mm -hmm. I used to buy um, a corn um, turkey. Yeah, yeah. Vegetarian sausages, yeah. the vegetarian bacon, yes. and your meal will then look the same. almost yeah, the same yeah, as everybody else's. Yeah, is that that's better? Really, yes, absolutely. Okay. But as I say, I just thought I'd better let No, that's fine. No, thank you. Lovely. No, no, that's in hand. Thank you. Thank you. With the guests tucked up in bed, Mark's thoughts turn to his own Christmas. Well, I used to have a real life, you know. But my, my real life is gone, so this is just... It feels like make-believe. You know, I'm just no good on my own, you know. I think lots of people would, um, even if they're going to family and friends and spending the day with people, they, they, there's probably lots of people who sort of paint on a smile, but at some stage you have to stop and you think about it, you know? So, I should be painting on a giant smile. <laughs> My childhood memories of Christmas were all about the magic of Christmas and Father Christmas and the excitement of going to bed and hanging up your stocking, waking up and finding that stocking, you then knew that it was real, it was Christmas. And I was a bit spoiled. I think I always got everything on my list and more. I think one year I asked for a go-kart. It was fantastic. It was my best present ever. None of my friends had a go-kart anything like mine. Well, that's why I've got a red car now. See, I'm just reliving my go-kart. My Bentley is my go-kart. <laughs> Kids jingle belling and everyone telling you be of good cheer. Stand by for the outside world and Merry Christmas. Merry yeah. Christmas. Not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a bit cruel. <laughs> I got you, didn't it? <laughs> be much mistletoeing and hearts will be glowing when loved ones are near. It's the most. Wonderful 300 miles away from Barnsley, Bill's first thoughts are of home, especially his grandson, Mark. My grandson is my favourite person in the world. We have the same interests. Sometimes he'll come through and he stops overnight with me and then we, we sat up to the wee small hours just having a, a glass of wine and having a chat and things in general. And we always have a good time. I love him to bits. Dear Grandad, you may not be here with us, but you'll always be with us. He always knew how to get to me. That's lovely. <laughs> My lovely lad. Where's your card, baby? Yeah, I didn't get you a card, I'm afraid. You didn't? No. Things don't change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I only bought a funny little thing. Isn't he sweet? It's the 
Vegetarian Christmas. I asked somebody to get like the corn turkey and the vegetarian sausages, and you can even get strips of like vegetarian bacon. Who did you bacon. send out for it? I can't remember. That's why I woke up this morning thinking about bloody vegetarians. Having promised a special meal to a vegetarian guest, manager Mark heads into Torquay to track down the ingredients. I can't believe I'm surprised. On Christmas Day. But nothing ever surprises me. When all the shops are shut. Get this place. If people did what they were meant to do, you know, then I wouldn't be doing this. That's why if I clone myself and do everything myself, then it gets done. I've got no idea where I'm going. Oh, yeah. um, do you sell any sort of vegetarian sausages or corn meat? Uh, no. OK, cheers. Oh, yeah. um, do you sell any vegetarian -y things like vegetarian sausages or corn? Um, corn? Not some vegetarian options, no. Right, OK, right, we're, we're, we're all doomed. I've, I've failed. But I'm, there's no way in bloody Torquay... I mean, most of Torquay didn't even know there was such a thing as a vegetarian. Can you um, get, get to um, Ron or whatever? Whether we make up a nice nut roast, we need to do something that looks like we've made an effort. All right, bye. I'm not surprised. It's Christmas Day. She just needs to find Ron and see if we can organise a nut roast. Ah, oh, crazy. As head chef Ron and the kitchen staff race to prepare 350 turkey dinners... We're all doomed, but Merry Christmas anyway. ..manager Mark returns to a hotel... ..full of hungry guests. <sighs> Is that it? ..and a dining room that's far from ready. We're, st we're still not laid up in it, you know? Why leave it to the last minute to create a real panic, you know? With lunch minutes away, there's just time for a flying visit... Can you help me get dressed? ..from old St Nick. Where am I going to stick the pillows? Can you stick one on my back, my shoulders? Is it my lunch bag in Austria, Dad? Oh, right, can you do me up, then? Right, do it tight, cos I don't want my cushion falling down. It'll look bloody stupid. No, not too tight. Oh, <laughs> I don't even know it's you. You're yeah, right. <laughs> get Karen to announce, if they cheer loud enough, Santa will appear, and then you'll get an atmosphere before we start. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you all. Unbelievable. When I first built a hotel, this isn't what I had in mind. Can we have a really loud cheer? Yeah. We have a special guest. Are we ready? One, two, three. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas to everyone! Ho, ho, ho! Ho, ho, ho! Wonderful. Here we go. Let's see what we've got. When I was a boy, I, I really believed in Father Christmas. I can't see where I'm going. <laughs> you know, he wore the red and white suit. He was sort of big and fat and jolly. Merry Christmas. It doesn't come with batteries. 
Oh. And I can remember one Christmas Eve seeing my father dressed as Father Christmas. Um, he, he was managing a bingo hall and he was going out to call the bingo numbers dressed as Father Christmas. Oh, right. Merry oh, Christmas! Yeah. Here we are, Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. My father, he was an entertainer, so he would dress up, you know? That's what he used to do. Merry Christmas! Oh, you're going to sit on your lap. I'm oh. disappointed. I, I ain't got the strength for any of that. <laughs> I think I'm a carbon copy of my father, yes. In many ways. <laughs> Have you been good? No. no? Well, I won't bother then. <laughs> Not intentionally. I didn't mean to be, but I, I think there's lots of things that I do now that probably my father used to do. Sandra, come here, darling. Oh, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> I love you, Sandra. <laughs> You get the uh, rest. Uh, uh, no, no, that one's one. got a bit on the end, that one. I oh, want a bigger <laughs> one than that. <laughs> <laughs> that's not yours, that's really Oh, yeah. We haven't got one, Santa. There's a novelty. Santa. There we are. Thank you, Santa. 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 Thank you, Santa. 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 You haven't got the price on there, has it? No, no it's not. It's 1.99 up shop. Cheap skate. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Santa. <laughs> <laughs> Can you open the door? I Karen, can. you're not realising, they're starting to go down to dinner before I've done a speech. That's what I'm panicking about. Help me get this thing off. Yep. <laughs> I've just waved Hello. goodbye to Santa. Can I...? Hello, Hello everyone! Hello. I'm sorry, apparently I miss Santa! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, normally I would introduce the chefs to you, okay? Um, unfortunately, they phoned in sick this morning. <laughs> but luckily, I found the keys to the deep freeze, and I know how to work the microwave. And that means it's dinner time! <laughs> A stampede. Hello. It's the single most important meal of the year. They're on the way. And everything must run like clockwork. Ah! Are you hungry? <laughs> well, you better be. For head chef Ron, overseeing three kitchens... Come on, faster. ..four dining rooms... This is sweet, isn't it? 30 staff... <laughs> ..and a seven-course menu... And that's the menu we've given you. Unbelievable. There's no margin for error. Whipping up a last-minute nut roast is the last thing he needs. This is so crazy, this. Now, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Yes. Is that, it? Is that around? That's OK. Having failed to find a vegetarian turkey substitute in the corner shops of Torquay... There's no point in sticking your head in the lion's cage when the lion's awake and hungry. ..manager Mark sends in head waiter Stephen to break the news. We had a problem. We sincerely apologise. They've done a homemade sort of nut roast. Yeah. Are you all right? What no, we... the nut roast sounds... The nut roast yeah. is OK for you. OK. What do you serve but never eat? <laughs> I don't know. What do you serve and never eat? A tennis ball. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Happy Christmas. Have we read that one? I can't see without my glasses. <laughs> what do you serve but never be? Oh. Tennis ball again. Oh, we well, you're right, yeah. Well, I think it's all right, been nutty. No, after the first glass. Yeah, you'll be all right. Wash it down with a bit of water, you'll be fine. The meal seems to be going well. But it's not long before the complaints begin. It's not just the vegetarians who don't want turkey. Are there aspects of the menu that you can't eat? Are you sort of aversion to turkey? I wanted the beef wellington. That's what I was looking at. Fine, OK, that's a good reason not to be happy with this menu. Let me see the nearest thing we can get. Just very... Very nice. What's up? Have you got any beef cooked? Yeah, plenty. How long want? to knock up a pretend beef wellington? A pretend? Two, two portions. 
If the beef's already cooked, whatever, we can, we can knock yeah, it off. Well, it's got to go through 20 the minutes. oven, isn't it? Okay, 20 minutes? Half an hour. Half an hour. Okay, so two beef wellingtons. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> Do you know what it's going to turn out like? I have told them not to expect too much. <laughs> expect nothing. It's beef pie, isn't it, really? It will be. <laughs> Manager Mark's 350 guests prepare to tuck into their Christmas dinner. Thank you. I'll have some vegetables for the day. Even those who have gone off piste with their menu choices. It's now and never for the beef Wellington. Okay. Do you want a candle in the top or something? Goodbye, Cornish pasty. <laughs> My reputation, it's gone. <laughs> At last, the vegetarian nut roast is served. That's Sorry about that. That's fine. Right. That's okay. Okay. But Mark's not off the hook yet. I'm really running. Now everybody wants one. I think in my next life I'm coming back for an easy job, all right? Can I have a nut roast, please? I need one for next door. A what? A nut roast. Yeah, we don't like turkey. Do we a... Just one. I need it instantly, please. They've already got their veg on their plate. We just got to turn it out, please. Hurry up. Yes, oh, lovely. That's that. very nice. Come here, right? oh. it'll stick back together. Turn now. Quick, hurry up. Ah, oh, he's in trouble. He is. It's OK. I'm a magician. In a minute, I'm going to make a big bouquet of flowers appear from up me, uh, do, up, up from somewhere. What's in the natural? I've got no idea. <laughs> For widower Bill... I am enjoying life. I really am enjoying myself. Coming away for Christmas means new friends and good company. I am having a great time. What, being a Casanova? <laughs> oh, well, it's lovely. <laughs> in fact, I was here last Christmas, and all Christmas, I was, had four ladies with me all Christmas, every day, all day. I had a fantastic time. Hello. Hello. Everything OK? Enjoyed your Christmas dinner? Yeah. We, we got away with it, didn't we? Just one little chap in there, one freezer, one little microwave. He just takes them off the plastic plates and puts them onto normal plates. This is new for me. No, excellent. Good. Yeah. OK, no, that's marvellous. You should still be here next year. Well, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I live here. I am home. Are you this is my home. Here? I haven't got time to travel. Oh. <laughs> we got away with it in here. Everyone's happy. Even my um, Wellington boot people are happy. Sausages and bacon, I don't think, will cook very well, but... Oh, half an hour, very nice. <laughs> yeah. Upstairs, the guests gather for the Queen's speech. It's lovely. Great. Lovely lady. No. Oh, come on, stop it! Oh. Oh. Having met her, you know. Nice. She's a lovely lady. Yeah. She's going through a lot of trauma at the moment. Yeah, she's doing a few yeah. more people like her. I wouldn't like her life anyway, now. I wouldn't. Not for all the money in the world. No, not for all the tea in China. No, no way. I wouldn't. After 15 long hours catering to his guests every whim, Mark's Christmas is over. It was much better than I thought. Much better. You know, I tried my hardest to do everything physically possible to make sure that whatever somebody wanted, I didn't care, I just just do it, you know, just make the make the guest happy, you know. To me it was worthwhile, you know, because I got what I wanted, you know, which was a, a real smile on my face. And I, did, I wasn't expecting one, so today for me it worked.
you know. So I'm, I'm quite surprisingly happy with myself. Having missed the whole of Christmas... OK, keep your hair on. Alison is back for New Year, and it's business as usual. You've coped very well, so I hear. You've been so good, and this is this muck that you got me. Did I buy you that? Do you not remember what you bought me? No. We bought you loads of stuff, and you didn't even ring us up Christmas Day. How rude. I was busy. So? Well, that wasn't my fault. You weren't here, that was your fault. But it fault. wasn't my fault I was ill. Yeah, but it's just poor timing. Oh, sorry, sickness. Don't come over me at Christmas. I should no, be No, don't. Yeah, but, Mark, if I got run over by a bus, then I wouldn't be here at all, would I? And then you just Well, it depends to, to what level you got run over, really. Depends if you kept reversing and backwards and Why forwards. For Mark and Alison, there's one more event before the year is truly finished. We've got guests arriving in less than two hours. One of the most important things, New Year, so everything's got to be perfect. Don't blow them up too big. So just literally, three puffs should do it. I want to do a trial. OK, so blah, 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 video one. Happy New Year. Ow. I think if I pull this, I think it will now go. Happy New Year. Exactly. That's what I mean. Unbelievable. And the clock is ticking. Oh, Hello. Good morning. Hi there. Morning. Yes. Can you put me a bottle of champagne on ice? Of course. For tonight? Of course. What do you have? Do you have more air? That is my favourite, but yep. if you haven't. No problem at all. More air. Yep. Thank you no very problem. much. OK. OK. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. We haven't got any more air yet. Right, send somebody out to Sainsbury's or somewhere to get a bottle of Murray, for Christ's sake. It's time for the hotel's New Year's Eve entertainment extravaganza. OK, so what do you do? Uh, basically, we're just singing. It's just a harmony duo, vocal harmony duo. OK. Um, so we've got, a, like, a bit of more of an easy listening set to start with, with a couple of little dancey ones at the end. When you say a dance set, you do know it's New Year's Eve and we need lively... Oh, yeah, it's all lively, it's all cheese. Cheese is our middle name <laughs> yeah, here, you know? Absolutely. It's, um, it's about holiday atmosphere, don't Focusing you know? Focusing on songs that everybody would know. Like... And dance. Is this the way to Amarillo? Do you yeah, do that one? Yeah, we got Amarillo. Oh, perfect. <laughs> we got Amarillo, yeah, no, we got we're the We're halfway there if you got that one. Yeah, it's all fine. OK, fine. All right. You haven't got Agadu, do, have you? It's Bill's last night at the hotel. Time to suit up. I do like wearing it, I must admit. It's, uh, it always looks good, or I feel good anyway. When it looks good, not I do feel good. I'm hoping to meet a lot of people and I'm hoping to kiss Many ladies, happy new year. Agadoo! I should have done Agadoo. More people would have got up there for that. We've got three and a half minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Can we all have you all on the dance floor? If we have to, we can have an inner circle with all the posh people in the middle. For Mark and Alison, midnight will mark the end of a tempestuous year for the hotel. <laughs> Let me explain how it works. We've just done our first year at the Groves. We're getting closer. During it, bit of a nightmare. Just, yes. A nightmare, right. but we got away with it, OK? One minute left of 2011. So next year will definitely be a lot easier. No, that's not true, because you will be in the office, I will be no. in the office, but you're... No, it's OK for you to say no. that, but from my point of view, I'm trying to fill 168 bedrooms, you are doing my head in constantly, flapping and interfering. 30 seconds to go. Oh! Tell you what, let's make some resolutions. 
You stop flapping around me and interfering, and I won't shout. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Deal? That's never going to happen, is it? Three, two, one. Here we go. My hope for 2012 is to be sat here in 2013. That's such a great line. I love it. But it's true, yeah. Right. I, I second that a million percent.